bit about what your life was like in 1979 before uh, that day. Tell me. Okay. Um, we had moved to Manchester from Glastonbury uh, in May, and we were just kind of getting a new start. Um, Shelley was two years old, and her birthday was going to be in August, so we were looking forward to celebrating her birthday. We had a big family party over there, um, and everything was pretty good. I mean, Billy went to work every day, he came home every day, and you know, it was a pretty normal life, you could say. I was a stay-at-home mom, by the way. Did, um, did you grow up together? How did you meet? Wow. Is that a long story? <laughs> Not really, no. Um, I was working at a local grocery store, and uh, his mother was a cashier there, and she was training me. And he came in to buy something, and he looked at me, and I looked at him, and we kind of clicked. And uh, he asked me out, and the rest is history. <laughs> Um, so, so you're a young mom, you're a stay-at-home mom. Um, tell, mm -hmm. me, um, tell me a little bit about what he did for, as a profession. He worked for Dufford Construction Company in Glastonbury. Uh, he started there and he ended there, unfortunately. Um, he worked uh, machinery there. He was on a paving crew. Um, I'm not sure exactly what he did for a job every single day, but he did work the construction and he was very good at what he did. Um, so tell me about, um, tell, me, tell me a little bit about him as far as, what did he do outside of work? What were some of the fun things he liked to do? He liked to go to Stafford Speedway. He was an avid race fan. Uh, every Friday night we would pack the car up and we would go to Stafford Speedway and we'd uh, spend Friday night watching the races and we did that for oh my gosh I was pregnant with her when we were still doing it and even afterwards we didn't do it as often but uh, but that was one of our passions we really liked NASCAR okay so let's let's talk a little bit about that day um, let's kind of let's kind of go back to um, to October 3rd what do you remember about that day beforehand? What do you remember about the morning, maybe what your routine was? Our routine was to get up early. He had to be to work for 7 o'clock. Um, we would get up around 5, 5.30, breakfast. And uh, then he would drive to work. Uh, and he would normally stop at his mother's house for a cup of coffee because she lived in Glastonbury and he worked in Glastonbury. So he stopped there for a cup of coffee every morning. Um, when he was leaving, he went to go start his car. His car wouldn't start, so he had to take mine. And gave him a kiss goodbye, and he walked out the door. And we had a little bathroom off of our kitchen. It had a window. And I don't know why, but for some reason I went to that bathroom and I watched him drive away. And that was the last time I saw him. That was in the morning. So that day you went about your normal routine with your, your daughter? Yes, uh, normal routine. Uh, you know, she got up breakfast and um, <clears throat> in the afternoon after lunch she went down for a nap and she slept for a couple of hours and, and she got up about three o'clock and uh, we walked outside to get some fresh air and play around outside in the yard. And I looked up and the sky was this really ugly green. And I, it just looked funny. It just had that eerie feeling. And, uh, you know, once, it, once we started playing and, you know, just, I don't, we just hung around, you know, um, doing mother-daughter stuff. And then I was um, going into the house to make dinner and expecting my husband to come home. So did you, did you have the TV on at all? Did you know that there had been a tornado? Did you, you just, um, because really where you were, it was just kind of weird, weird weather, but not it did was. You have any rain or anything like that? No, we didn't. We yeah. didn't have any rain. The sky was just an ugly green and I did not have the TV on, so I had no idea what was going on. Um, so, and this is obviously before cell phones and, and all of that, so, so kind of paint us a picture here. You're, you're waiting for your husband to come home, and then what happens? Well, um, Shelly and I, call her Shelly. Shelly and I were sitting down, we were having our dinner, 
because Billy was usually late. Um, and I heard this crunch, because um, we had like a, um, sliding glass doors out to a patio and into the parking lot. And I heard this crunch, and I looked out there, and it was my parents' car. And I said, what are you guys doing here? And my mother says, where's Billy? I said, he's working. And she says, no, he's not. He's, he's, he's in the hospital. And I said, what do you mean he's in the hospital? She says, there's been an accident, he, and he's not coming home. And I don't really recall what happened after that. And that's how I found out that my husband was dead. So that, that night, as you said, must have just been a blank, you know, trying to figure that out. Did, do you remember the days? Do you, do you remember planning for his services? I do. Tell us about that. Um, well, back on October 3rd, the night there, um, I was not formally informed that my husband was dead. Uh, Mrs. Dufford came over my house to see how I was doing and she stayed for a while. My parents were still there. Um, and after I put my daughter to bed, we were watching the TV and that's when his name came across the screen. And that's when it really hit me that he was not coming home. So nobody officially called you? No. From the hospital? No. From no state police, no local police, no nothing. Obviously communications back then were a little primitive <laughs> as from what they are today. Um, but that's how I found out formally that my husband was dead that, on the TV. That's very excruciating. It was. Um, when you, um, when, when you did, uh, somebody at some point must have said something to you besides your parents um, uh, because you needed to make arrangements. Um, did, did, did people tell you details? Did you not want to know details? How did, how did you know what happened to them? I, after a while I did speak with a lot of people. Um, I don't know if you want me to go into a great detail as to... It's up to you if you want to um, talk about it. From the way I understand it, from what I was told, uh, they saw that the bad weather was coming in. They were paving a parking lot in Windsor. And they took shelter in the company truck. Now, there was one gentleman who went onto the driver's side. My husband was seated in the middle, and then there was another gentleman on the uh, right side, the passenger. Uh, from what I understand, Bill had his friends put their heads down in his lap and then he went like this. Unfortunately, he was the one who got caught in the crossfire of the tornado and he died immediately. There was no suffering, thank God. That's how I was told. And was he, um, were the, these two co-workers, was he older than them? Was he, um, no. was it just his nature to protect others? I think so. I think so. Um, no, the, he was actually, I believe, the youngest. He was only 24. So tell me, I know you were too little to, uh, you know, to know what was going on. Do you have, do you have memories of your dad at all? Not really, no. When do you, do you remember when you started to maybe ask questions or were you just told about your dad? Um, she's always been very honest about what had happened. Um, I probably started having questions more in elementary, middle school yeah. is when it really started to affect me that I didn't have my dad and wondering why. <laughs> Were, um, growing up, were you, um, were you curious as the internet came up and, and, and there was more information? Did you ever look into, like, researching the tornado? Not when I was younger. Um, I remember doing a school project yeah. about tornadoes where I actually had to go to the library and research it. Um, but now I Google and YouTube a lot 
and I like watching the interviews of things that have happened about it. And I watched actually just recently uh, the EMT that brought him to the hospital, which was interesting to hear. Yeah, how, I'm, I'm curious how um, that must be comforting to you or is it upsetting to you? Which is it? Both. <laughs> I would think that I would if I would think that I would want to know more because maybe it connects you a little bit. I do. I want I want to know the details. I'd love to talk to people more who may have, you know, been with him that day or, you know, had information. Did was there any um connection um to his coworkers after? Did you would you speak with them? Did you uh... No, not really. I um the only one I spoke with was um the other victim's wife for a very short period of time. Um, he was the third fatality. Um, but, he, but no, I never had any other contact with any of the co-workers. The third victim wasn't a part of that same group of, of men, was it? Yes. Yeah. Oh, he was? Yes, he was. He was in the truck? Yes, he was. Oh, I didn't, I, I guess I got my... Yeah, I did not realize that two of them had known from the same truck. Yes. Sorry, I didn't know that. Um, so, so tell me a little bit about the days that followed. I mean, it, uh, what, what was your, what were your tasks that you had to get done to? Well, I had to arrange for the funeral. Um, it wasn't easy. Yeah. Um, I don't even think you remember it. <laughs> I, I don't. I was in shock. I just, for probably a good week after that, I was in shock. I just don't remember a lot. I just remember going through the motions. Uh, you know, I was also very young, so it was, I don't really remember a lot. Do you remember the media? Did, did the media intrude upon you? No. No. Not at all. Interesting. We, um, we interviewed the, the one um, woman that died in Windsor. Um, her son it, spoke for this piece as well, and he's never spoken about it before. And for him, um, maybe because he lived in that, in that neighborhood, the media was not good. They were... Um, they were always there kind really? of in his in his father's <clears throat> face and, and everything. So maybe maybe because you weren't in, you know, that community, maybe that spared you of that. You know? I think you're probably right about that. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Um, uh, has anybody ever reached out to you to, to talk about it on all these anniversaries that come up? No. No, not at all. That's interesting. Um, so tell me... This is just, it's probably hard to look back, but tell me what it was like going on after that. What? <clears throat> it was, uh, once I got myself situated and uh, knew where I was going, where I was headed, um, I got myself an apartment and uh, with the help of my family and my friends. I got through it. There were days and there were nights that were difficult to get through, um, but I had my daughter that I had to look after. She took up most of my time and most of my, um, uh, missing paces. Yes. <laughs> did, um, so, so when he when he died, did you did you have to go to work after that, or did your life completely change as far Excuse as me. your way of living? No, it didn't change. I, fortunately for me, I was able to still stay at home to raise my daughter. Um, years afterwards, I um, started going back to school to become a hairdresser, and so I worked part time at that for many years. And uh, of course, she was growing up then, and she was able to stay with babysitters or actually my parents they took care of her a lot yeah she was uh my parents were a big help to me did do you remember um the 
do you remember the articles in the paper or the TV um, in the in the days and the weeks after? Do you remember seeing that? Did you just stay away from all of that? No, I I did read the articles in the paper, um, and I would see year you know like years later, a year later. There's the anniversary. Here's the pictures, um, and I would see that, and I would save some of the articles, and I would save some of the papers, um, but nobody ever came to interview me after that. Would you have liked to talk about it, or would it have been too difficult, you think? I, I really don't know. Um, it would have been nice to be approached, but again, the communications back then were not the greatest. Did you have any, kind of, um, any uh, connection with Ella Grasso at the time, the governor? Did she reach out or her office? Tell me about that. She did. Um, she went to the funeral, didn't she? She did. She came to my husband's wake. She approached me and we spoke a little bit. And she shook my hand and she attended the funeral. And she, I thought that was very, very kind of her to do that. What was your impression of her just overall? Was, or was that it, like that was your only? That was my only uh, greeting with her. Um, and I just, I thought she was a very eloquent lady. You know, we, have, we have a lot of, um, we have actually a section that we're kind of devoting to Ella because she came up in every single interview that we did. Um, mm -hmm. People <clears throat> just saying how she how personable she was and, and hands-on she was mm -hmm. and comforting she was. Um, so tell me, um, growing up, um, I mean, we, kept, we sort of touched on this already, so I don't want to um, harp on it, but um, tell me when October 3rd would come around, you know, were you always thinking of that on, on that day as October was coming? Yeah, I still do. Do you think that, I know this is really hard to answer, but how do you think it affected you just not having a dad growing up? Um, difficult. Uh, not having a dad figure in my life. Well, I had my grandfather, you yeah. know. Um, but it was hard seeing, you know, the kids, my friends, having both of their parents there and just, again, just wondering why. Why did it have to happen to us or to me and not just getting it? So it was harder as I started getting older. So your grandparents must, must have been a big influence. Were these your parents? My parents, yeah. yeah. Um, do, do your dad's parents, were they still in the picture at all? Yes, they, uh, his mother was. Uh, his father had died many, many years prior. But yes, my mother-in-law was uh, also a part of yeah. her life. And I'm very close with my dad's brother my uncle, who is my godfather also, yeah. so that helps a lot. Yeah. 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 His stories, you know, his yes. legacy, you know, alive. Um, so we talked about him personally. Um, so I know every, every year or every five years or every 10 years, you know, they, they, they look back at this day and Again, I know this is kind of difficult to probably put into words, but what is what is this day, this anniversary? What does it mean to you? What do you? How do you feel about it? I, I feel sad, but I feel happy. I feel happy that he's in a better place. He's looking down on us and smiling. Um, but it's also sad that she doesn't have her dad with her to, to see his grandchildren. Um, would you say, I think you touched on it um, at the very beginning, but would you say your strongest memory of that day is, is maybe looking as him as he drove away? What, what do you think your strongest memory was of, of that day? Of watching him drive away and being outside with my daughter and looking at the green sky. Those are my two vivid memories. How do you think, and this is a general question, we've already kind of 
talked about it, but how, how do you think this experience changed both of you? Maybe, you know, as mother and daughter, how, how did this affect you? It made me grow stronger as a person, more independent. Yeah. Much more independent. Definitely. Yeah. We have a very close relationship, too. Yes, we do. Um, is there something, I mean, uh, we've, we've kind of touched on my questions here. Um, I, th I think um, one thing, well, there's two questions that I always ask everyone, but um, one is, um, even though you weren't directly in the tornado yourself, when there's bad weather, tell me how that affects you. I'm, I'm terrified. And especially lately with all the tornado warnings we've been getting, I, we literally, I just made my family run into the basement as I'm just, um, what's the word, intrigued by them. <clears throat> I want to see one, but I'm terrified at the same time. How about you? It's uh, terrifying. Um, I'll, a few years ago, <clears throat> There was a tornado warning in Glastonbury, and that's where I was living at the time. And I was home alone, and I was on the phone with you. <laughs> Remember that day? I do. Um, <clears throat> Bruce DePriest was saying, if you can, stay away from the windows and go down in your basement. So that's what I did, and I was on the phone with her. And I think the closest that I came to be in near a tornado was that day because the winds were howling and it sounded like a freight train was running through my house and I could actually feel the house lifting a little bit. Yeah, um, come to find out there was not a tornado but there was a microburst two streets away from me. That was pretty terrifying. And I just kept thinking to myself, it can't happen twice in one family. The last thing that I ask everyone is, um, and in, in your case, what, what do you want people to know about him? What do, what do you want people maybe to, to know about his, his life, his legacy? What's important for you to let people know? <clears throat> he was a good father. He was very proud of his daughter. He loved NASCAR. He loved people. Love and he liked family. driving fast. <laughs> Other than that, I just know what I've been told. Yeah. You know, he loved his cars, his duster. Yes. As a matter of fact. His dog. <laughs> he loved, he loved yeah. his family. Yeah. As a matter of fact. <clears throat> Excuse me. He had a 1972 Plymouth duster. <clears throat> and it was a really souped up race car. It should not have been on the streets. <laughs> and uh, when... Shelly and I moved to our own home. I had previously promised her she could have a cat because she loves cats. <laughs> and she named that cat Duster. Yeah. That's great. Um, and he loved the Yankees. Thurman yes. Munson. Thurman Munson, that's right. <laughs> I actually named my dog Munson. 